Welcome back to Dudes on Dudes Fighting. I'm uh, Robert John, and this is my co-host Stu. How's everybody doing? We're fucking I guess, good. Uh, dude. Yeah, we're on week three, actually. Even though nothing's posted yet, but keep your eyes out if you want to check out what we were talking about before. The last uh, we've had what? This is our third is week in third a row episode. with UFC. I keep blowing yeah. it. Well, the first time it wasn't <laughs> totally my fault because we decided the day of UFC 230, let's start a show. And we just mm-hmm. didn't, I couldn't get it like uh, recorded and posted in time before the event. So we thought like, you know what, whatever, we'll just bank it. And then when we record episode two, we'll launch them both at the same time. So last yeah. week we recorded on a Thursday night. And then I went traveling into the deep wilderness of Transylvania. And I mm-hmm. just, you know, dumbly assumed that I'll have a 4G network on my phone all weekend and I can upload it whenever. <laughs> but that was not the case. So uh, I tried to upload it and it said it uploaded, but it uploaded with a bunch of errors and doesn't actually work. So here we are, yeah. week three, and we're going to upload three. all three videos at the same time. Um, yeah, and sorry uh, if you listen to the former week, sorry to Chris Weidman <laughs> and uh, fans because we kind of tore into him a little bit, but um, actually, fuck it, I don't take anything yeah, back. Fuck Chris <laughs> Weidman, go back, listen to the other two episodes, I, I pull no punches. Yeah, um, we'll, we'll take it easy on you this week. Something way Since, better than uh, Chris Weidman, though, is uh, tagging sports. Stu, why don't you tell us about Tag in Sports? Well, Tag in Sports is actually the main company that I'm working on. Um, It's a platform where you can connect to people in your area to play recreational sports. You can live stream uh, events. You can um, connect, yeah, like I said, connect with people in your area. If you're in a league, you can uh, follow your league on there. Um, You can create leagues on there. Um, It's just pretty much a platform for you to go on for everything sports and anything to get you out of the house and actually in the game playing it. So in the future, we're going to have my partner Vince on. We're going to have uh, have him tell you a little bit more about it. And uh, there's big things coming out with uh, Tag In Sports. So go to your app store or Google Play and, and download Tag In and uh, go on the journey with us because it's it's going to be awesome. It's it's really going to be something for you guys to, to listen to the podcast and then um, – go out and have fun after you listen to the podcast. One of my like favorite memories as a kid doing like just random sports, like near my house, there was an empty lot. Like, I don't know what the deal was. Like how often does that happen? There's just like an empty lot, no house, empty, you know, yeah, family size lot, but it was empty. So we would play football on it like every Saturday And then one Saturday we went to go play football, like, you know, me and my like eight to 10 dudes. And there was this this other kids playing on it from another school. And Uh, at first it was like, oh, fuck, like we can't play today. And then they're just like, your team versus us or your team stick us. Did you say stick us versus like when you were a kid? Yeah. You stick us. Or like it'd be like if you had another like good buddy, you'd be and be like, me and Kevin stick all. Yeah, yeah, and then, yeah. Like you two would play like the whole team, but it'd always be like, yeah, us stick them. It was like, it was like the terminology. Just like if cars were coming by and you're playing road <laughs> hockey, you just yell car, <laughs> yeah, yeah. move the nets out of the way. But like you never did a good job of moving the nets out of the way. Yeah, like, yeah. the cars would still be pissed driving by. <laughs> But anyways, remember, go on. Yeah, so we just had like a super go? violent, you know, uh, <laughs> high hostility game because nobody knew each other. And like we knew like, oh, that's from this school and we're from this school. So we can't How'd lose. How'd you guys do? I don't remember. But I remember like uh, one of my friends, his younger brother has one kidney. I don't know what the fucking deal was with that. Ooh, that, that was like his have thing. To peel off. Yeah, like he's the kid that had one kidney. Uh, I don't know if yeah, it was a birth so defect or whatever, easy, you know? but he, like, mm-hmm. we always took it easy on him because we were like, oh yeah, that kid has one kidney, like, 
So yeah, he's, you know, but the other school two. didn't know that, and they just demoed him, and then it just turned oh. into a brawl because we're like, "Man, that guy's got one kidney," and they're like, "Fuck his one kidney." Like, <laughs> fuck him and his fuck one him kidney. and his one kidney. So that was he's a, gonna have no kidneys after this game. <laughs> <laughs> it was a it was a it was a hostile game, but there's yeah. nothing like just setting up, uh, you know, me stick you type deal anyway that's what the app is for yeah yeah (laughs) Yeah, and we got like a dodgeball league which is surprisingly fun we've kind of started it off with just like like all the games that you played in gym class when it was just like oh man like we're gonna have to run today psych playing dodgeball supply teacher or like playing european handball today all right gym class doesn't blow today no laps <laughs> so <laughs> it's like we're doing fun gym sports and then of course we're going to include baseball and everything but that's just the the leagues that we're running of course you can put like whatever sport if you can think about it it's pretty much there's a way to uh um, to put it on the app. Yeah, so, you pretty much just yeah, like, I want to play tennis today, so I'm going to post, like, I'm going to be at this location at this time, and, like, yeah. other people can search and see, like, Yeah, oh, the map comes Yeah, up. yeah, that's fucking sweet. I'm going to go play yeah, basketball so we'll today. Do... I got, like, six friends, like, you know, all are welcome, or you can put a cap on it or whatever. It's a pretty sweet idea. Yeah, you can put how many players you want, whether there's – like it's co-ed or whether it's just guys or just girls or anything. So, yeah, keep an eye out for that. Like I said, we'll have Vince on to explain. Like he's he's done so much work on this and, and knows the platform inside and out. And, um, yeah, it's, it's his thing. I own a little bit of the company, work on, on the marketing side of it. But, yeah, we'll have him on to, yeah, go over that with us in the future but I'd say we get to what we're here for and what everybody else is hopefully here for, which is this kick-ass card on the weekend. Yeah, UFC Fight Night. Um, this was the 25th anniversary of the UFC? Yeah, 25th anniversary Crazy. of the uh, UFC in Denver. Yeah, back where, where they had their started. very first. Yeah, their very first card was there. So... Um, do you remember that? Like, ha- like you're pretty old. <laughs> I think no. I didn't see the first one live. I think the first one I saw was UFC Brazil. Yeah. And I just rented it at Jumbo Video. Like, shout out to Jumbo oh, Video. Shit, you got that popcorn. Yeah, I didn't like know what UFC spends. was. Like, I'm was and still am a huge pro wrestling fan, and they had the like mm-hmm. wrestling fighting section at the video store and. They must have had the other UFCs, but whatever the cover of UFC Brazil was, I feel like there was a dude doing a drop kick. And oh, I'm like, shit. oh, I'm just so like, I'm getting this. Eye. Yeah, I don't know what this was. And that was like mid 90s. I'm sure I yeah, could do, I do. A, I'm going to do a quick Google right now while we're live. When yeah, the hell was the probably first on your like Brazil? 12 bag of popcorn. So, oh, yeah. If anybody's you, never you, been to Jumbo <laughs> Video, you missed out because they had free popcorn. It was so salty, it'd make your eyes water. But you just kept going back for bag after bag. There was no limit on how much you could have. You served yourself. It was the best. Like, that's what people are missing out on. Fucking video rental stores. Because it was always, like, it was an experience going there, too. Yeah. To the video store, looking around for hours. And then you ended up with some like crappy video and you probably ended up with some late fees that you never paid and <laughs> never then paid. you go to blockbuster and go there until you had too many late fees to pay off there as well so yeah, yeah. video stores were kick ass video back stores in the day. were the best cuz you just like walk around it's kind of like netflix scroll but you just feel like less of a piece of shit cuz you're walking around <laughs> <laughs> you're not just yeah, laying you've in left bed. your house yeah you yeah. left the house yeah, um, you Google tells me Ultimate Brazil, that's the tape I'm thinking of, comes out okay. came out in nineteen ninety nine. Wow, that's so crazy. It's not I quite, was nine years old. Yeah. So I guess I'm at like the twentieth anniversary of watching UFC, not quite the twenty five. That's insane. Well, for anybody who's like 
This, I guess this would probably be everybody's first time listening since we don't have those other ones <laughs> uploaded. They might have like but, retroactively uh, watched the other two real quick. <laughs> yeah, dove yeah, into this. they came up first. Um, but RJ's been a fan of UFC forever. Like you've been here in 20 years. He's been watching it. I'm a bit of a newer fan. I kind of like came in probably like three and a half years ago and just like off the bat was just addicted. So we, he's out in Romania, been touring around gypsy style Europe. And, uh, I'm back home in Canada and we just like, message all the time every single fight like what we're doing on this podcast is what we'd be doing over facebook anyways so we decided like let's let everybody else in on our conversation give you guys the privilege of hearing us (laughs) (laughs) yeah hear uh hear our bullshit because we 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 talk absolute straight nonsense like if you're here to listen to uh to two pros talk about fighting then uh i don't know keep listening but you might have the wrong podcast you might want to check if out you, our you, boy if you Ariel, dig back you know. into the last two episodes i am <laughs> the most confident in my picks and i am 30 mm-hmm. percent of the time right i am the worst at picking fights yeah maybe even lower than it's that horrible. you've actually gotten better since we started the podcast but um i want to do an just, episode maybe next week of like i'm gonna make my picks and then purposely switch them all and just do the opposite and see how i do okay because i'm day the podcast. freaking worst maybe i'll do that today maybe that's today's episode okay that's this is a good card for that because i feel like there's not like next uh this weekend's card like there's not a lot of people to be emotionally attached to <laughs> on this card. Like you can tell this ESPN deal's coming up because they're just like here Fox. Yeah, like, yeah, just, just fill out fucking, the rest of the year. Yeah, here you go, Argentina. Like <laughs> <laughs> fucking <laughs> have you heard of any of these guys? Okay. Uh, let let's let's talk about UFC Fight Night twenty five anyway. Um, do you want to talk about the first three fights or just skip to Pennington we and Durant? We can just and talk about the winners of them. Like okay. I think in in the first fight, um, I like I had, picked Trezano. I was right on that one. Yeah, and I went with uh, with with Pena, which uh, <laughs> I I didn't actually. I saw the post fight interview, but I missed the fight because I was partying it up at a wedding. So, but shout out to Trezano. Uh, shout out to Dave and them. Steph for a beautiful wedding. Yeah, it was awesome. <laughs> Partied with your brother. Last thing I saw was him with like pretty much an open dance floor playing air guitar with just like <laughs> no, everything was untucked. And there was just like he was playing air guitar and it was Steph, the bride, and like one other person, maybe his roommate, as you guys referenced yes. in your podcast, yes. pretty much at experts. But they were ripping up the dance floor, and I, I was like, "See you later." And he just like kind of looked at me and stared right through me because it was an open bar, and I was like, oh, "All yeah. right, I love you guys. I'll see I got you later. the I, I got the full post game on the wedding, and it is a fucking story. I think he. Oh blast, really? I, I think he'd blast me for outing him, but. There may or may not have been puking of a bed. <laughs> oh, that's so awesome. Man, I should have May or may around. not. I'm not spreading any rumors. We, uh, we, <laughs> I was just like, like, uh, all right, I'm going to be honest. I was a bit constipated for some reason <laughs> during the wedding. So I was like, God damn it. Like, I, it was open bar and I wanted to party so bad, but I needed to get that demon out of my stomach. Yeah, yeah. So we stayed. We took the first bus out and didn't end up staying at the hotel. But, uh, yeah, your brother and uh, all your buddies were just having the best time ever. I was like, I was walking. At one point, I was just like, you know what? My feet hurt. Like, women always walk around weddings with their shoes off to yeah. hit the dance floor. I just took my shoes off. I joined Damn. Team team Lady. I was whipping around. Doing They're onto slide. something, are they? Yeah, man. I had pink socks on. Sick. So, yeah, no judgment. But, yeah, that's awesome. 
that uh, your brother may or may not have puked on a bed. <laughs> Just ruin a hotel room and checking out without telling anyone. Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe not. Well, you guys are recording tonight, so you're going to have to bring that up on your he podcast. He doesn't like because... talking about that stuff. He's embarrassed. But I'll, All right, I'll try well, and go good to thing we can talk about it <laughs> yeah. on here. Because it's not true. It may or may not. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. It's just it's rumor not... and speculation. What our show runs on, Stu. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's all our show runs on. We make shit up and hope people believe it. <laughs> and then um, we have victims like Chris Weidman, who um, eventually, once we get more than eight listeners, I'm sure we're going to get a lot of backlash for <laughs> Luke Rockhold is also. Uh... Not painting yeah, in the best light. Yeah, but fuck that guy. Man. Yeah, fuck Rockhold. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's move on I, to Macy Barber and Hannah Cyphers. Um, yeah, this fight actually got a lot of talk. Um, yeah. Yeah, because Barber did a good. Fl- uh, yeah, she Neither did of us picked out. Barber. <laughs> no, yeah. Which is funny because we never usually go without uh, with someone without a picture on the UFC website, so... But, but the uh, reason I picked Cyphers in this one, because, yes, she doesn't have a picture on the UFC website, but it also doesn't say where she's from. And I just thought that was so mysterious, I had to pick it. Yeah. So, shout out to Barbara for getting the win. And uh, that was a... What what she win by ground and pound there? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that was a big victory. and uh, Just overwhelmed it, her in the third round there. Yeah, and she she got the UFC like definitely was trying to get her name out there because she had a, quite a bit of uh, interviews after, and uh, yeah, it seemed like they were really like building that one up. So we'll definitely be hearing from Barbara in the future, and now that she's had that big win. Um, we, we know a little bit more about her well, too. So it's no secret that the UFC's like women's divisions, like all three yeah. or four, like as shallow as a cereal bowl. Like you get two wins yeah. together and you got a title shot. Yeah, it's crazy. We'll we'll get to Pennington and uh, Durangami in the like a little bit down the line, but I mean Pennington's record for getting that title shot recently too. It's just like it just goes to show, you know. And I I, I think that's also why you see like a lot of rematches in the women's division too. Yeah, it's just, just not like that there's many not a lot of depth. Yeah. Like, um, how many fighters are in the 145-pound women's division other than Chris Cyborg? I can't like, think of anyone. It's pretty much they just make up <laughs> fighters for that division. Yeah, they're and like Cyborg 135 or everyone. move up. <laughs> yeah, we'll give you a bonus to get your ass kicked. But. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> but she's got a, a big fight coming up uh, with Amanda Nunes, which will, I mean, that'll be her best test. I'm pulling so, for Amanda. Like I again, yeah. My track record is fucking horrible, but mm-hmm. I'm betting the house on Amanda and the upset. I think that's just gonna, it's going to be the best fight that we'll see um that Cyborg have because I mean she's just running through these girls. Holly Holm gave her a run for it. Yeah. Holly yeah. looked good. Holly's yeah, and, and, a similar size, though. Holly's huge. Amanda Nunez yeah. is not quite that size. Yeah, I mean, imagine Holly Holm pulled that off, though. Like, if she took out Cyborg and she took out Rondo after Rondo was on that huge run, like, she would just would have been the biggest thing in women's mixed martial arts. Yeah. So, yeah. I, I don't know. I'd like to see her have another run at it before she's done at least or before like kind of things um quiet down with those two because uh i think if holly lands that big shot she she can knock her out right Mm -hmm. so totally it's just that cyborg is just so intimidating and that aggressive style that Holly's a little bit more of um, a striking. I wouldn't say she's a better striker, but she's more pinpoint. She wants to yeah. do the one-two head kick. Like she wants to set those kind of shots up, and she's really accurate. 
And Cyborg yeah. just to like fist set your hips, swinging for the fences, and just like gorilla attack. And Cyborg, I was watching something recently that said that Cyborg was walking around at one eighty five at one point. Yeah, and that's fucking cut insane. Forty that's, pounds, that's crazy. To make one forty five, yeah. like they were trying to get her to make one thirty five. <laughs> that's yeah. insane. But that's apparently she's got it cut. down to one one seventy, which is a big cut still. That's but huge. I mean. For a guy that's yeah. huge, but a woman like that's way huger. Not to get all uh, unequal rights or anything like that, but women with like the boobs and the butt and stuff, like they just carry around a little bit more body fat. So cutting forty yeah. pounds in fucking three days is crazy. Well, t- and and two, like women's body are like completely different. Completely I was different. Talk about it. On Rogan, I watched a bit of the fight companion for this card that we're talking about now. And, like, they were saying, like, shit with the, the hormones and if they're on oh, their period. Yeah, shit. they carry like, a, lot, a lot more water. Yeah. yeah. So, fuck, man. Like, shout out to, to, shout those out to women. For having, <laughs> shout out <yeah>. to women. <laughs> shout out to the ladies because we respect our females on this podcast. Speaking we of are big, women. Let's talk about Benil Dariush. Because <laughs> you called him Benil Dari Douche last week. And it was Dari funny. Douche. <laughs> well, he uh, he's back in the win category. And, um, I mean, he had a bit of a struggle there for a while. What did he lose his last three or something like that? Yeah, and this was a decision against an unphotographed fighter on the UFC website. So that doesn't say much about you. Yeah, but the finish was there, I think. Yeah. Um, okay. So I mean, yeah, I, I I think the fight was fairly like even though, and uh, yeah, I mean, Darius I think bring, brings around like a a lot bit bigger of a name, mm-hmm. and uh, he he's getting he gets a lot more shine than I mean it seems like he deserves if you're a newer <laughs> fan, um, but I don't know like good for him being back in the win category I could fucking care less about that fight but um, yeah it'll be interesting to see who he gets next or where he stacks up next because nobody's really talking about that fight. No, it was pretty forgettable. Well, and but the top, like the the main three fights on this card were so sick. That that's like, the problem. Like that's why they give yeah. out fight of the night and not, you know, best effort. Dare douche. Yeah, Fucking Dare douche. Effort Sorry, of dude. dude. Let's move on to Pennington and Durand and me. I yeah, also thought this and... fight was a little bit like um, it lacked luster. But yeah, Durand and me is fucking good. She's so good and like. They're throwing Pennington to the wolves here. Yeah. Like, fighting... So she just fights Amanda Nunez, gets picked apart, absolutely destroyed. And then they're like, here you go. Here's another former champion. Um, And this isn't just like a former champion on a downward skid. This is a former champion that gave up her title because she didn't want to fight at 145 anymore. (laughs) <laughs> like yeah. this is a cowardly champion yeah but who has something to prove because she's there's fuck, fucking she's idiots really like us good. out there talking yeah. so much shit about her. <laughs> <laughs> she's incredible but she just didn't want to fight cyborg who we just like gushed all over so she gave up yeah. her title and dropped down a division and this was um pretty uh lock stock and barrel of a fight like she just had it so Look what good. do you think? Like, like she kicked some ass in this fight, but because of what happened with her 145 title, Nunez is moving up to 145 to fight Cyborg. When do you think she gets a title shot in this division, considering her past history? I think on one hand, like, you got to err on the side of, like... Is she just going to GSP this and win another title and quit before she has to defend it? Yeah. But then on the other side is like, yeah, of course don't and fight she's Cyborg. And not GSP. You'll die. <laughs> like, yeah. I think running from Cyborg is completely respectable. 
That's like no, having definitely. a slingshot against an atomic weapon. It's like, just Dude, don't even bother. Just turn and run. I would join the track and field team to get the fuck oh, away from Cyborg, I'd, man. I'd, I'd be curling <laughs> like anything. Badminton. Give me yeah. any other sport. <laughs> badminton. <laughs> uh, imagine she tried to play you in badminton. I'd even be scared of that. She's too aggressive. Yeah. but Hitting you after so the bell. Do, do you think that... Like, I mean, she just beat a girl who fought for the title, like, pretty easily. And so do you think that she gets, uh, like, a fast track to Nunes if Nunes moves back down to 135? Which she she probably probably will win her loss. Yeah. Um, So. I don't know of any other, like, contenders that are ahead of her at 135. mm Mm-hmm. But like we were saying, the like women's division is so goddamn shallow. It yeah. wouldn't surprise me to see like Rose jump up a weight or even Cyborg well, go on some crazy diet and drop down. Like anything I don't is think go- we ever see that. <laughs> yeah. We're in a weird time in the UFC where they just want big fights. Yeah. And Durand yeah, May, I guess, is a big fight. Fun. But do you yeah. want to put Duranda May in a title fight when she literally won a title eight months ago no and then just like abandon it because she didn't want to challenge? Cyborg. Did you watch her post fight at all? No, um, I skipped it. She's as about as dude, entertaining as a block bad, of wood, dude. <laughs> she like I felt so bad. She was talking about how like she almost went blind and shit and. Uh, I don't know if she was drinking that backpack moonshine that you were drinking out from the skate park or what happened, but I had some other talking. kind of moonshine this weekend, my friend. Some yeah, Romanian I know. Uh, plum said you wine. Were ten out of ten. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I got. Did you sick. throw up in your bed? And I didn't split. throw up in the bed. I threw up outside <laughs> for a little second, and then I got you know chauffeured to bed two nights in a row. <laughs> 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 there's nothing like oh making a bunch God. of new friends in a new country and then being invited to a weekend away in someone's cottage and just being chauffeured to bed both nights oh, dude that happened to me at rock fest a few <laughs> years ago i was hanging out with all these people who couldn't speak english and then like we were having a super good time when i was normal and then just at one point I just became that guy and was just shit faced wasted walking around like no idea what anybody was saying but then I just came to the conclusion that they were talking about me and then I was like kind of like came to and realized I was like supposed to be at a campsite but I was at some huge mansion in (laughs) some part of Quebec that I had no idea like where I was. So I walked down this massive driveway, got there, and then I'm like, where the fuck am I? And then I just see, like, like I'm on this, like, main street, and I'm like, how do I get back to the campsite? And nobody spoke English, and I was just like, all right. And then one guy, like, pointed me over. So I walked for a bit and then ended up at, like, in some open field just looking down at all the campsites. The sun was coming up. I'm supposed to be up to go to the show the next day. Yeah. And I like my three other friends are in the tent sleeping already. I stumble in and they're just like, Stu, what happened to you? And I was just like, nothing. <laughs> nothing just, I'm fine. Just at the show. And I'm just, just trying to play it cool. Yeah. yeah. And then it just felt like a fucking peg of shit the next day of the show. But. I don't know. It ended up going okay, but <laughs> it was, yeah, yeah, making new friends who don't speak the language and then becoming that guy within a half an hour is uh, probably not the way you want to go about things. To give credit to my new friends, like all of them <laughs> spoke English, not first language though, so I was able yeah. to uh, not be that guy totally. But yeah, there's parts of the night when they're just all speaking Romanian. I'm just like, I don't know what's going on. I'm gonna keep drinking this plum moonshine, and my whole body feels like it's on fire. And I want to get up and move, but I physically can't. If I take my eyes off the wall, I will fall on the ground. 
<laughs> I just love how you and your brother both puked in the same night. Just, oh, yeah. <laughs> or With the time difference, allegedly. though? <laughs> allegedly. Allegedly. Yeah. yeah. Okay, let's talk oh, about Cerrone and Perry. Yeah, that was a fight, let's, man. Let's talk about this. So, and- background for this fight. Donald Cerrone has been at Winkle John Jackson MMA for like 15 years, like WEC yeah. days. But uh, his yeah. side hustle is his own training facility called the Bad Motherfucker Ranch, BMF Ranch. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he basically trains there most of the year. And then when he has a fight, he'll go back to Winkle John and Jackson and do like six weeks to get like in ultimate shape. But he dips. Yeah. So he's not there all the time. He's there like five months of a year, maybe half the year. I don't know. But recently, yeah, but he, Mike Perry... He's this, one of their main guys. He's one of their main guys. It's like John yeah. Jones, Michelle Waterson, Donald Cerrone. Cerrone. Yeah. So and this then, other uh, fucking guy from yeah. Florida, of course, Mike Perry, this guy, <laughs> he's a piece of work. He he's recently, crazier than a box of spiders, for is, sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he uh, he recently the joined uh, the same gym. And usually that's a little bit of like a contra- contrast of interest. What do you call that? Conflict of interest. When yeah. two fighters in the same weight class train at the same gym, like usually the coaches have to like keep that shit separate. But mm-hmm. it's like, whatever, he's a good fighter. We'll let him train. And now that they're supposed to fight each other, Donald Cerrone politely asked, um, maybe... The head coaches don't coach him or don't corner him just because these head coaches have been working with Cerrone for like 15 years. So they know all his secrets. They know his flaws. They know his his strengths that he's going to lean on. So just out of respect, he's like, hey, can you guys like step out of this one? Maybe someone else could like take the lead on that one and I'll take the someone else to coach me just so there's no bullshit. And yeah. the, the gym basically said, like, okay, we're going to have a meeting, and we'll get back to you. And they had a meeting, and they got back to him and said, okay, Donald, you're out. We're kicking yeah. you out of the gym, and we're putting all our chips behind Perry. So long, and thanks for nothing. Yeah, and, and the weird thing was, though, too, Perry went down there to trade and then called Cowboy out. Which is just, like, in bad taste already. Like, I mean, I love Perry because I think he's fuck, fucking absolutely insane. Oh, bad and, taste like, is his middle name. And, like, he talks a bunch of shit, makes racy videos where he's a native person. And, uh, yeah, just, like, absolutely, like, one of the craziest people in all of the UFC. So I respect that about him. But then, I, you you tip me off to his wearing like Indian fucking war paint and a headdress <laughs> last week, and I watched it and I died laughing. This guy is oh, fucking yeah. crazy. He basic because Donald Cerrone's nickname is the Cowboy, so Michael yeah. Perry dressed as a Native American with a headdress and face paint and all this shit, ran around hooting and hollering, doing the oh, super offensive and racist. <laughs> and you have to yeah. know that like the effort it took for him to find a headdress to paint his face like that he had so much time for other people to tell him like hey dude this is a bad dude, idea yeah. do not put this, this on the internet 15 second video no. either like he it wasn't an off the comment like uh conor mcgregor will say something slightly racist or homophobic every now and then yeah and then he's his excuse is like oh it just slipped out or whatever this is not yeah. that he fully dressed as a Native American running around the gym with a tomahawk and a bow and arrow. Like, it was over the for line. At least three days. Like, over the line. There was hours and hours of thought going into this. It's ridiculous. Just, like, judging by, like, Perry's personality, not a lot of thought goes into anything. So, for him to go <laughs> and put that much thought into this was, like... Oh, man, how did nobody be like, hey, dude, maybe not? <laughs> maybe, I have to but... feel like there's one point when he walks up to the other dudes in the gym and he's like, hey, have you seen this cowboy? <laughs> and the looks on all their faces are like, please do not show us on camera. <laughs> like, what the fuck yeah. are you doing, dude? Especially because 
<laughs> the gym's already like Cowboy's such a big star and everybody loves him. He goes <laughs> yeah. on Rogan and shit. So like everybody's paying attention to the story. Everybody's shitting on the gym already. And then he's like, yo, I got this idea. Where's this cowboy? Have you seen this cowboy? He's doing like the open palm on your mouth, like yeah. blah 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 thing, which is just like so offside. But I mean, offside, like, dude. It's, it was fucking incredible. I I don't know. Like, I hope he fucking keeps pulling dog shit like this all the time because Mike Perry is one entertaining motherfucker. Yeah, I was like uh, <laughs> a, a normal human that sees like all these things for what they are like super offensive but as yeah. far as like if you're picking a fight with someone and you can't forget like that's what the UFC is like these are two dudes fighting yeah. so him doing shit like that like that's fucking awesome. Yeah, let's yeah. chalk it up to CTE. He just didn't yeah. know. <laughs> CTE and being born in Florida. Yeah. And like, like, at the end of the day... The... <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. He won a fight, and then he's got face tattoos, and then said, kids, don't get face tattoos. Well, at least until you're old enough. He like, kind of <laughs> talks like Michael Jackson a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> he's nuts. But and then we got on the other hand we got Cerrone who is a veteran of the sport, been around forever, fucking goes in there and just like puts it all on the line every single fight. Um, like I'm a huge fan of Cowboy. Oh, he he's like great. tells some of the greatest stories when he does podcasts. He's a wild he, man. He's not scared to like throw out his own opinions that might not be the most politically correct he's a bit and, homophobic yeah maybe, maybe <laughs> a little a bit, bit homophobic but he's, i mean he's a cowboy though it's a he's a cowboy lifestyle. yeah he's not an uh a native uh, american <laughs> yeah but so to break down this fight perry goes in there he thinks that Cerrone's just gonna stand and bang with him goes out there it looks like Perry's getting off to a good start. And then eventually Perry goes to take Cerrone down, where it's just like, well, that doesn't seem to make any sense whatsoever because Cerrone like, has one of the most underrated ground games in the, all of the UFC because mostly he goes out there and slugs with these guys. But, so He's a legit Perry ground fighter. Perry decides to take him down, and then they get into it in the ground, and then... Uh, at one point, Cerrone gets the arm and absolutely fucking tears Perry's arm apart in an arm bar. Like, Terry, uh, Perry lifts him up and then slams him down, but Cerrone still has the arm bar and ends up breaking his arm, winning this fight, and then in what we Ooh. look for in fighters, good dad Number fashion, one thing. gets his kid in there. As a strong, strong father figure. What a gets highlight. His little, yeah, gets what his little highlight. guy in there. His little guy has this cute little, little cowboy outfit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he's got uh, he's got the headphones on. He's trying to drink a Monster Energy while Cowboy's <laughs> fucking talking his shit. You know then, that's uh, not just for the camera. Like, he definitely feeds <laughs> that kid Monster Energy. <laughs> I'm all hopped up on Mountain Dew. <laughs> Time to get up from your nap, soon. <laughs> yeah. Get in the wagon. We're going ATV. Play with your blocks faster. <laughs> but, I mean, Cerrone showed Cerrone. real Yeah, what a great family, man. Father. The wife, the yeah. grandma, and the child all in the ring. Oh, he always is rapping his grandma Love really it. hard. He's huge on and grandmas. This- his grandma walked up to a Winkle John apparently after the fight and said, uh, should have went with the dinosaur. Yeah. And they like said, you should have fucking bet on my, my grandson. Did and, you see uh, uh, Winkle John's response on Instagram this week? I, I didn't, but I, tell me right now because he, I love the drama. He basically says, um, if you go to a doctor and the doctor says you have cancer, the only solution is to cut the cancer out. And we did that. Win or loss, we're better off 
And it's like, ooh. ooh. That's why everybody's leaving fucking Jackson yeah. Wayne right now. He did then go on to list like 10, you know, great current Jackson Wink fighters and then finish up with, if you're a fighter with experience, we're welcome all comers. So it was a bit of uh, uh, trying to get some new you know, blood in there because Donald Cerrone just put them on notice. That uh, oh yeah, and what then you got the gym. whole shit show with John Jones. Yep. Which like whatever happens there, I'm down. I just I'm glad that he knocked someone out, and we're gonna get him back in the ring. Um, but outside of Jones, like they don't have any like. Hard as fuck. Like, they got Michelle Watterson. They got Holly Holm, who's sick, but she's not who she was. I think Diego Sanchez is still there and Carlos Condit. But none of these guys are in the prime (laughs) right now. Carlos Condit fucking blowing it all over (laughs) the place. Jesus Christ, man. He retired to be like a fucking telephone sales guy for a bit and then came back and was like, yeah, apparently I can't sell shit, so I gotta get in here and fight. Well, it's just like these UFC fighters get paid so much goddamn money and they have no other experience like working a nine-to-five. So they get two or three losses in a row, and they think, oh, my time's up. It's time to retire. And then when they try to make ends meet with their fucking real life, and they realize, like, oh, I don't get 200 grand in one night anymore. Even if I'm, you know, realistically, they might maybe fight twice a year and with taxes and shit. But they're still making, even if you did two fights a year at 200 grand and you're getting taxed, like, 40%, like, you're still making... 300 grand a year probably which yeah, is and way more than the average fucking person like struggling to make 50 and they're doing what they like to do man. yeah you're like, just working out all day eating whatever the fuck you want you don't have to worry about yeah. like buying groceries like us yeah. average friggin people have your budget like i can't afford this or that I don't have all these sponsors just giving me free clothes and free this if I talk about it on Instagram. So you guys, I think that they sh- they gotta let them do their sponsorship stuff on their shorts and stuff again, man. Mm-hmm. Like I think you you've heard such a backlash with the fighters recently about how they're not getting paid enough, and and dude, like I'm always behind the athletes on that. I want to see these guys make a lot of money but i don't want to hear them bitch about it all the time either yeah. i think if they get their own sponsorships like they had before you hear a lot less people bitching about how much money they're getting paid like the reebok deal like some guys are profiting off of it but like the lower level guys who were going out and getting their own sponsors and getting them on their trunks especially if they're on a big event they're making double their coin oh, if yeah. they can if they can rep whatever brands that they want to you know and like i get that ufc had this deal with reebok and then like they they have like exclusive sponsorship with other companies as well but it's just like man like there is a solution to fucking shut these guys up complaining about money let them have whatever sponsors they want to yeah then you hear them complain a lot less And then I I feel like a lot more people would be happy. I feel like there's got to be a loophole as well. Even with Cerrone and his, like, monster energy drink. Like, he brings that into the ring after the fight and shows it off. But it's because they're a sponsor of the UFC. Yeah. But, I mean, like, there's got to be something like that. Like, okay, you can't have all these other, like, condom depot and shit all over your shorts like you used to have. But yeah. if you could walk in with something else, like a physical product, like a can of Monster Energy, yeah. I don't know. I think there's like there's room for sure, like you're saying. But at the end of the day, like these guys all got to shut the fuck up. They get paid way more than anyone yeah. that's paying to watch these fights. Like yeah. normal yeah. people are the making majority. like fifty to eighty thousand dollars a year on the high. If like a lucky. normal person, yeah. yeah. I don't make anywhere near that. I make half that. I'm struggling to make half that, and I'm supporting this product. I watch it every week, and these guys get paid more, you know, in one round that I make all year, and they're still like, oh, I don't get paid enough, like, my fucking sponsors, blah, blah, blah. They need to all shut the fuck up. Like, you are in the top 1%, Mm -hmm. but 
Anyway, Cerrone is the fucking man. I love that guy. He's the fucking man. Shout out to him. Shout out to his little guy. Little Family Jackson man. Cerrone. Shout out to his goddamn grandma. Yeah, Grandma and, uh, Cerrone. Uh, Agnes we, Cerrone, I think her name is. I just made up. Apparently, Jackson's like still his guy, and he's going to corner him for the next fight. That's what he said, but that also just might be like, you know when you're in an argument and you do that like you're angrier than I am kind of deal? Like you're madder than yeah. I am. Like that might be just one of those moves. Like he said, like it's, Jackson will do my next one, but not this one because of like I don't want to cause any drama. He might just say yeah. that to seem cooler now. We'll see what happens in his next fight. But I mean if he's going out there, he even said in the fight, uh, post fight, like I've never gone into a fight with a with a game plan and we actually built a game plan for this fight and like obviously it worked and like it seems like he has a good relationship with those two guys that he was talking to um or ta- was in the post fight uh interview with that he was cracking all those black jokes about <laughs> like why not stick with those guys man they're young yeah. they're up and coming they might be the next jackson wink who knows Cerrone so, said some cool stuff in his post fight too that like having a kid and seeing his kid in the audience like reinvigorated him and like the yeah. cowboys back because he's been on a bit of a slide in the last like year mm. he's gone a little bit of a checkered win loss record so he's saying that he's back and he's coming for Khabib and I'm excited yeah going back down to 155 is going to be interesting yeah. and uh and uh yeah shout out to Cowboy uh I think we'll see Perry like back and he like this this sucks for him but I mean like Perry's entertaining enough that he's gonna put people like in the seats to watch his oh, yeah. fights in the future so I don't think like this is a huge slide for him. I mean, it sucks going into the gym and everything, but like, I think this was gonna happen one way or another. Like, I I really thought Cowboy was gonna get it done at by any means possible. He's because, you uh, know, two when, and five whenever... in his last two and three in his last five fights, which isn't good. Yeah, but I think he's still two wins or two losses away from being cut or being worried about being cut because he's so charismatic and controversial. Yeah. Like the UFC loves guys like him. He's safe. Yeah, they'll give him someone more in his like realm. Like they'll give him a stand-up guy yeah. who's more yeah. his size and everything. He's still and... not ranked, so pretty much anyone off the street is in his realm. Yeah, exactly. And then uh, worst comes to worst. He come he they put a young guy in against him who doesn't have much shine. And they get people to watch the fight and then they can build up someone off of his name, you know? Right, right. So you know what? We're gonna see a lot more from Perry and we're gonna see a lot more fucking craziness. Hopefully he keeps it up. And do you see what he tweeted after? I did not. Cowboy, you broke my damn arm. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, All right, that let's, brings let's us Let's talk to about this. the main event. Holy shit. That was a barn burner. Fight of the year? Uh, I mean, dude, I got home from the wedding, and, like, I just watched the post-fight interview with Cerrone, and then this fight came on, and I just stayed up watching it, and I was just like, holy shit. And then, yeah, I'm saying fight of the year. I, like, it has to be. I can't think of even a knockout better than this. I thought maybe, like, okay, uh, um, what's that huge uh, black Francis dude? Ng- in, yeah, Ngano and yeah, Overeem. But that was December last year. So technically this is, well, not technically, legitimately, this is the best <laughs> knockout I've seen this year. So yeah, this was uh, pretty top much... Top 10 I, ever. It was back and forth, but... Chan Sung Jung, the Korean zombie, in my opinion, held, you know, his own. He was winning the fight. And then yeah, with about a head on. two to five seconds left in the fifth round, Yeri Rodriguez, Yair Rodriguez, Rodriguez, just bent down, threw his elbow up blindly before behind his back. 
and clipped yeah. Jung in the face, knocked him out dead cold. Oh my god! Sack of I potatoes knocked out. Gonna wake up, man. That was one of the scariest. Yeah. Like actual falls to knock out. He was like, doing that, that like uh, that heavy breathing too. Like that's the yeah. way I felt on Friday night when I got put to bed by my friend. <laughs> Where, like, every breath, I was just, like, so thankful. Like, I remembered how to breathe. Like, I was that level. Romanian p- peach uh, yeah. plum. snobs or Romanian, plum. Or maybe it was pear. It was pe- pear or plum. I don't remember. It was a late night. <laughs> of course you don't remember. <laughs> but yeah, so it was, he, like, one of those, like, every breath well I'm taking. Yeah, every every breath I took, I'm, like, praying, like, can I do I have another one in me? Yes, another one. <laughs> and that's the way Jung looked in a heap of fucking bullshit laying on the ground, like face down, ass up. Yeah. And Yair oh, didn't man. like walk away a winner. He immediately collapsed. Like they had been at war for twenty five minutes. Yeah. And Yair's calling for the doctor, his leg is all fucked up. Like this was a war. Yeah, what a I mean, fight. every fight that you see the Korean zombie in, though, it's one of these fights, you know? Like, That's why he's got that Him name. against Cub Swanson, yep. like, after that, you were just like, holy shit, did we just watch that? Yeah. And again, like, it's just like, I thought, like, his chin was just going to hold up. Like, and your year was hitting him with some crazy shit that whole fight. He was, like, the zombie was winning that fight, but, like, Yair was doing some crazy yeah. shit even early in that fight. It that would have taken most men down. Yeah, but, I wouldn't uh, say it was, a, like, a landslide Korean zombie domination. No. I would give him the no. edge, but he was... They were just standing in the pocket delivering. And, yeah, I, <laughs> I would say Jung was winning the fight until the knockout. But, like, Yair has got nothing but respect from me. Because he stood yeah. there and he took it and he dug deep. And maybe you could say that was a Hail Mary elbow. But mm-hmm. still, it takes some level of accuracy and confidence and experience to know that like that elbow is there if I need it. It's yeah. not like he covered his eyes with the other hand and just swung his foot around or something. Like It was just mm-hmm. a perfectly timed elbow coming in. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Fight. I think I think if anybody in the 145 pound division has to be like, oh shit, like no matter what happens, we have to be watching out from all angles if we fight here. Yeah, yeah. Like he can pull out anything at any second. Like if he can pull that out in the last what five, seven seconds of the yeah. last round, like you can pull out anything. Like, it's it's just, like, it's crazy. I mean, he got handled by Frankie, and I really thought that he was dodging Zabi. But, I mean, anything I said last episode talking shit about Yair, I take completely back. Um, I love him, and I hope to see that him uh, fight Zabi because that'll be a crazy fight. I think that fight will be a lot like this one. I feel like what we talked about in last week's episode about UFC is just like thirsty for a Mexican fighter that they can put all their stock behind is still going to be a problem. Like that's what happened with Yair a few months ago. Like he came off the Mm -hmm. ultimate fighter, got some wins and they like fed him to Frankie Edgar thinking he'd beat Frankie and that would be his like crowning moment, but he lost and then he got, you know, less confident and ran away from Zabid. So yeah. I'm just a little bit afraid that after this fight, they're going to be like, okay, man. Throw like, him to the wall. Yeah, again. like Dustin Poirier is coming down to 145 or some bullshit. Like we want yeah. a big main event on the next Fox fucking UFC card before we like end this contract. Yeah. Um, well, he's going to be out for a while though, man. Oh, that he's foot fucked, is fucked up. up. Yeah. Did you see that legendary photo of them like, Holding like like kind of like like high fiving, holding hands yeah, in the hospital and, with yeah. them like oh they're both so fucked they're up both back to back. Done. Yeah, awesome. I'm, awesome. I'm, I mean, I'd like to see. I felt bad for the zombie though. He came out with a statement saying he was embarrassed or something. I like, saw that, that on Facebook down because as I mentioned last like, week, we are friends on Facebook. 
Oh yeah, that's so awesome. <laughs> so fuck. You were saying about like oh when he fought Cub Swanson, but when he was in the WEC, I was a huge fucking zombie fan. Yeah. And uh, I bought one of his t-shirts off his website, like that Korean zombie shirt. I can't even remember the guy he fought, but it was like a crazy fight. Um, and then he like emailed me and like thanked me for buying the t-shirt. And I just like added us on act. Facebook. And then uh, I think like maybe a year or two later, there was a UFC in Toronto at the like um, <clears throat> Sky Dome. And there was a... Yeah. UFC uh, Expo or something earlier in that day, and he was there just as like WEC guy still. And yeah. I went up to him. I'm like, "Hey, man! Like, I bought your T-shirt and I added you on Facebook." And he didn't speak any <laughs> English, but he's like, "Yes, yeah, thank you." <laughs> we got thank like cool. a thank photo you. together. I'm like, "Fuck yeah, Korean zombie!" <laughs> That's awesome, man. Yeah, he was a cool. Yo, dude. do you still have that photo? Uh no, that was on like. Uh centuries ago digital camera sd card um on myspace somewhere yeah yeah this is like 2010 it was a long time ago <laughs> <laughs> but uh what a fucking a shout out to both those guys and what a war and shout like, out to 2010 I, I, shout out to 2010 man that was a g- <laughs> great year fucking first year of college Ooh. getting wild Getting crazy. I think that was first year of college. I definitely wasn't watching UFC back then. Or WEC. I was deep in it. But you know what it was, man? It was hard for me to get into UFC because, like, the people my age who watched UFC were just, like, they were fucking dicks. Yeah, that was the height of the tap out days. Everyone thought they were a fighter. Yeah, everybody thought they were a fighter, and they, like, like were working out at the Georgetown High School weight room, and it was just <laughs> like, oh, man, I just don't want anything to do with those dudes. No. Um, should we move on to, uh, let's break down, we're already at a friggin' hour, but yeah, this coming November this 18th, quick. we got another UFC fight night. Let's just talk about the top three fights. Yeah, we'll just go over that, and there's then a if there's anything on this we're talking about, we can we can talk about it in the next episode. Because, yeah. dude, I don't know shit about most of these people. I, I actually let's talk about the top four because four? you want to get uh, Fiera in there. Oh, Tom yeah, Breeze, yeah, that's Calvillo. A cool name. I like she's a top team person, and like the UFC was really trying to uh, Cynthia Calvillo. So she was really getting built up by the UFC at first. She even headlined a card last year against that Scottish girl. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, that should be a fight. I think this one goes, um, I think, uh, uh, I'm going to say Calvillo by submission in that fight. I like Botello by knockout or TKO. Yeah, they're both. Uh, yeah, I like the nice abs. Nice looking on. ladies. Portello's got a set of abs on her. Yeah. So what's that? One fifteen. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. That yeah, I think that'll actually be a lot better fight than uh, than we're giving it credit for. So shout out to those two ladies, and uh, yeah, that that should be a, a good one. It'll be. It's good to start off the card like that too. It's the only two females fighting on this entire card, so... Um, Do you think Yeah, it's a, recently the UFC has been, like, tiptoeing on dropping the 125 to pound division because nobody cares? How dude, do you feel is, like the women are going to do? It is dropped. Is it dropped? But the next the fight is Dillashaw and Cadejo at 125. Well, they just cut all their 125 pound fighters pretty much yeah but like, Dillashaw's the, the fighting word on for this, the 125 title it's going to be like I the think like this swan is song what they, what they do here is they're hoping Dillashaw wins he can keep his title at 135 yeah and then they just end that division after that fight because they wanted to build that fight up I think they want to give Cejudo one more like big crazy fight before they have to move him up but like yeah, a lot of those dudes were getting cut last week. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm with you. They're all gone. It's a little weird that they're going to do one more 
But like you said, yeah, that makes sense. Dillashaw is the heavy favorite. Maybe he'll win it, close the division out, be the champ champ, and then yeah. possibly jump up to 145. I don't think he could do it, but Dude, that's I'm so a huge tough. Dillashaw fan, so I do think he He's can do it. He's one of my favorites, yeah. yeah. Dude, um, yeah, I think – yeah, I, I think we we see that division end right after that fight. Yeah, the division's done. But my question to you is, what does the women look like in the next five years of UFC? Because I have to be honest, since Ronda left, I don't give a fuck. I wasn't even a big Ronda fan, but all these fights are just like, who are these people? Like, it seems like they just have it for the sake of having it. And they keep I adding the new weight class division. I like, like 115. I love Rose Nemeunis. You know this since day one. Yeah. But adding 125, 145, like it just seems like they're adding titles to make new champions so that they can have a women's fight on the card that's relevant. Because right yeah. now, like Cavallo and Bontello, like I don't know who these people are. Yeah, and, and yeah, it, it seemed like they were names at one point, and now they're opening the card. Yeah. And, like on a Fox card, you know, where yeah. like they were headlining a card last year. So I, I don't know what. Uh, it's a shame because some, some of these ladies they, have got some real talent and grit, but well, they seem especially like Especially with fiddle. more women coming in and doing it because of people like Rhonda. So maybe we see. I mean, with Mighty Mouse gone from the 125, like you said, we see that division go away. Maybe they try to put more marketing into the 115, the 125, and the 135. I I, I don't think and we the see 140, that 140. 145 can think, fuck off. Like, yeah, no one cares. I don't think cares. we see that. I think after Cyborg's contract's up from, like, this current contract, yeah. I think we see She's her gone. go somewhere Dips. else. I yeah. think we go see her go to Bellator or something. And uh, honestly, it would be great for Bellator. It would be great so, for everyone. Yeah. yeah Cyborg included. Because she doesn't get enough respect. Nobody's watching the 145-pound division. There's no division. The it's Cyborg. Cyborg versus whoever wants to try. Yeah, you're true. Like, you're right, though. Like, I haven't seen another fight in in that weight class I can't think of another fight there's, in that weight class other than people fighting Cyborg. There's never and been moving a up from 135. Fight. Yeah. <laughs> never been a non-title fight. It's just Cyborg versus whoever wants mm-hmm. to try it. Um, yeah. Let's talk about Roundtree Jr. and Johnny Walker. Johnny yeah, Walker so we'll has the... no photo, but that's a cool <laughs> name. Yeah, man. His parents were on to something. When He's they... Brazilian, <laughs> though. That's interesting. Dude, there is no nicknames in this fight whatsoever. Roundtree's Cole. got a set of abs on him, though. Jesus Christ, he's fucking he's jacked. A, he's a lumpy dude. Woo! Look at his knees. Um, he's got some knee abs. Yeah, so <laughs> do you know anything about either of these guys? Never heard of either guy, but I got to go with Roundtree Jr. just due to the knee abs and stomach abs. And the the fact that he has a picture. He has a photo that's huge. Huge in my book. I'm going with Johnny Walker's black label on this one, buddy. Oh, I, I can't disagree. Okay, let's The move. Jay Walks. <laughs> All right. So just... Uh, okay, we got some nicknames yeah. on this next fight, though. Ricardo okay. the Bully Lamas and Darren the Damage Elkin. And if I you like aren't sure, Darren Elkin has his fucking nickname tattooed in gigantic uppercase letters on his chest. Yeah, it looked like it looks like someone like actually tagged him it, while he was passed it out. It looks or something. like a drunken, he liked it so much yeah. that he was like, "Yeah, Trace let's it. do this." Trace it. Um. Yeah these these guys are both names twelve and thirteen. Uh, they're ranked twelve and thirteen. Uh, Ricardo Lamos twelve. Darren Alkins, 13. So this is actually a perfect fight for both of them to figure out where they stand. Um, Trading places fight. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I like the damage. I'm going to jump ahead of you. I like damage. Yeah. I think he's got nothing but a future. He's new to the UFC, like last mm-hmm. two years kind of deal. 
Ricardo Lamas has been around for a little while. For a long time. Treading yeah. water, as they would say. The, yeah, I'm with you. Let's go for the damage yeah. on this one. And then is, that, oh, oh, are you not going with your backwards picks? Or is this, like, are you tricking me? Oh, right? shit. So we have to back this all the way up. Let's back it up all the way at the end. So Okay, I, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so, so let's, so let's we'll, move to the main we'll event. We'll go through them quickly after. Yeah, and, and I'll do backwards RJ picks. RJ will give you his backwards picks. Yeah. So we Neil got... Neil Magny. Yep. Number eight. In Santiago Ponzinibbio, the Gente Boa, which I would imagine translates to the gentle squeeze. Yeah. That's sexy. I love it. I love it. The gentle squeeze? Is that what you said? Yeah. Oh, man. And is he Argentinian? He is an Argentinian, and my Spanish is at a basic level. (laughs) A a basic level is a lot better than mine. (laughs) So I'm with you. I believe anything you say, actually. I'm I'm throwing... Um, So who you got? I like uh, Ponzinibbio. I like him. I think he's an up-and-comer. He handled Mike Perry. Yeah. But you can never really count Magny out That's either. That's the thing. It's a tough fight. Yeah. This is kind of a trading places fight too because Magny's ranked 8 and Ponzinibbio's ranked 10. So, Did you yeah, ever you think you'd see... see the day when a UFC would be headlined by a ranked 8 and a ranked 10? <laughs> no. like, like the, i said it's the end of this fox contract this fox card is getting the bullshit fights right now yeah yeah this isn't even like like a, a fight pass fight this is like <laughs> an actual like like they i haven't seen any marketing for it whatsoever like i went on today or last night and was just like let's see if there's any build up or anything like this fight's only six days away <laughs> there was just nothing but it is <laughs> it is all the way down in argentina so i guess they're just not wasting their money because no one's yeah. gonna watch it so I'm that is it. something about UFC that I do really like, that it is a global sport. It's mainly U.S.-based, but maybe yeah. once a month they're in a completely random-ass country. And this Saturday yeah. it's Buenos Aires, Argentina, a country yeah. that barely has food and water for their citizens is asking, you know, 60 bucks a ticket to go watch <laughs> fill an arena <laughs> to watch Fuck, the, man. the gentle squeeze Santiago <laughs> Ponsonibio. This is their second fight in Argentina, right? I think yeah. they've had one more card they there have. before and and the crowd was insane. Oh, Argentinians so actually... are all insane. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Have you spent time in Argentina? I've not gone at all to South America. The furthest south I've been is like uh, Belize, I think, like just south of Mexico. So is it like is it too dangerous there for you, or you just haven't made no, your way down never, there yet? Never made my way down there. Belize is uh... pretty tranquilo. <laughs> what? Tranquilo is like uh, like tranquil. Okay. Tranquilo. I went to this so, lake in Belize that was like sulfur fed, like the bottom of the lake was like a sulfur bed. <laughs> so the lake smelled like fucking shit, but oh, it was like man, the clearest the water worst. ever and it was so warm and you didn't have to worry yeah. about like crocodiles or anything because like nothing could live in that water, including humans. <laughs> <laughs> but you could swim but you around. Went with, swimming. Yeah, you could swim with your mouth closed. <laughs> just make sure you don't have like you don't open don't have like an open wound or anything because no, you might turn into not. like that fish from the simpsons with three eyes but i'll take that over like crocodile water like the rest of southern mexico like that shit's terrifying yeah. <laughs> all right well back to the fight i think i'm gonna go with you actually because i it's the same reason why I uh, took our boy Chris Weidman in the fight <laughs> <laughs> in New York. I want to see an at-home guy win it. I want to see the crowd behind him. Oh, that'll be a good like, fight. 
especially for a, such a fucking lackluster card, like that would be awesome. You know, like people, like if the crowd went nuts and like there was some excitement to it, and there was so like an, uh, if there was a highlight reel finish or something, like it might actually have more than just me and you talking about this card even though we skipped the entire there's card way of... too many fights no yeah and we, the ufc we website didn't even bother to break up the prelims and the main card like that's how little they care <laughs> no they don't give <laughs> they, a they fuck they just fucking toss them all together so let's do I the i didn't even see dan dana put like a picture up that says fight week and he always does no, that. he put a picture up that said week <laughs> off in maine <laughs> yeah <laughs> smoking sitting, meth and riding a go-kart <laughs> yeah <laughs> so let me do my uh reverse picks because my originals okay, are all yeah, dog yeah. shit i love it so i'm going I with caveo i'm going mm-hmm. with johnny walker I'm going with Ricardo Lamas, and I guess I'm going with Neil Magny. Neil, don't let me down on my reverse pick. <laughs> Are you going to try and put, like, a couple bucks on DSI? Bet DSI, Bet DSI is my reverse. go-to every week. Um, I do a $5 parlay on the full main card, and only yeah. once in the last three years have I ever got all five right. So <laughs> God knows how much I've dumped on Bet DSI in the last five years. <laughs> This podcast brought to you by Bet DSI. <laughs> One day is brought to me by Bet DSI, yeah, but it is do, actually brought to us by. Commercials let's do so a real commercial for that. Tag In Sports before we wrap up. Um. Okay. Yeah. A real so, one. Oh, Tag Tag In Sports is uh, your platform for everything recreational sports. Um, if you have leagues, uh, tournaments. Um, you just want to get the, out there and play with their fr- your friends. This is the platform for you. Um, there's live streaming. Uh, make a profile. No- there's notifications on there to let you know when your next game is. If you're participating in a- an existing league. Um, I love the live streaming feature that w- we have. So, like, if your friend's playing or, like, your mom and dad want to watch you play but they don't want to come out to some dusty field where a bunch of people are chugging beers in the fucking parking lot, then they can <laughs> you can get your girlfriend to tape it while you're out there having a good time. Um, this app, I think, is going to really change the game uh, for the way that people play rec sports. And it's, it's really going to get people out of the house and, and on the field. So like I said at the start of the episode, we're going to get Vinny on here um, to talk about it in the future. And actually after this episode, I'm going to meet with him for, um, for some exciting shit that we got coming up Sick. with uh, more more leagues that we're putting together in the GTA. So uh, we have a dodgeball tournament coming up in the GTA. So I'll be posting about that. And, uh, yeah, thanks everybody for listening. If you download the app, tag in sports. It's in the Google Play Store. It's in the App Store. Download it. Watch it grow. Uh, be be a part of uh, be a part of it before it uh, before it takes off. Like I'm pretty sure it's going to. Um, you can message your friends on it. And yeah, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be awesome, and it's already proving to to help a lot of people who want like don't necessarily like well, a have a group thing. of friends like, people want to like they... play basketball or something but yeah to shoot well, think... free throws in your driveway is fun for all of seven minutes yeah well think about how much like fun s- softball was when you oh, were here like damn it's the highlight of your week highlight it's, of my it's... last five years mm-hmm. you gotta go out <laughs> And you get to fucking actually do something, and it keeps you in contact with your friends for, like, everybody's getting older, and everybody's got their own jobs, and doing this and that, and, like, the thing with our team, the Mortar Shell Muckers, shout out, we were, we won, we've won five games in our total of four seasons that we've had, and <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I don't know, maybe put a more talented team together if you're going to do it. But last the best year, part is the last year all I my played. friends from high school. Go for it. 
You yeah, it's all my friends. From terrible my athletic school. friends, also. Oh, dude, they're the worst. Yeah, yeah. They're man. Our dodgeball team with like a couple of my sister's friends and like my girlfriend's sister and like one other person is already doing better than my baseball team. Yeah, and like we're not. App, like actually the greatest dodgeball team ever <laughs> but yeah it's it, the best part is is just like you like all my team is built around all my friends from high school and we still get to see each other every wednesday for the full summer it keeps us like going at like during the summer we always know what's going on with each other we're always going out to parties on weekends so i mean it really like it helps your social life. It really does. As well as like it's something, having uh, a great time. I totally took uh, for granted being someone yeah. that like I have like a pretty like gypsy lifestyle, as you said. <laughs> and uh, playing He's organized a traveler. Playing organized sports is like one thing that's like okay. Every Wednesday, I have to do this. The rest of the week, yeah. I can fuck off and do whatever I want. But on Wednesday, I can see all my pals and do this. And tag in sports just makes that yeah. a little bit easier. So right on, Vince, yeah, so, right on, Stu, and right on tag in sports. Yeah, so just keep an eye out for updates and everything. And and we'll get Vinny on here to explain it in a more professional manner. Because, yep. like I said, he built every corner of this thing. And he's a really talented, smart dude. So. Yeah. Uh, if you're listening, Vince, I love you, and hopefully I didn't butcher our product on here because Vince, uh, it's, yeah. it's really a great fucking Vince, you are the product. friggin' man. I can't wait till you actually record the ad so that uh, you can do a better job than us. But tagging sports is sick. <laughs> I don't think we did so. <laughs> it's not so, so bad, bad, but like Vince is so a lot bad. more elegant than yeah. us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Vince, Vince can like explain every th- part of this app. Yeah. In his sleep. He can lead a um, room, man. Like, if I was ever yeah. to get married, like, I'd want him to do the toast. Like, that guy can talk. Yeah, he's a great storyteller, yeah. too. There was a and he's had some wild of, nights. Uh, oh, I don't want to throw him under the bus or anything. This isn't even a bad yeah. story. But there was a time when he used to just sleep on the floor in my kitchen. Fucking good times. <laughs> he's waking up to Stuart, waking up to Vince in the kitchen, and like, here's here, dude. He's like, yeah, man, sleeping on the couch. Going from Sleep. RJ's kitchen to an apple. We didn't it. have an extra couch or anything. He did not care. Just kitchen floor. <laughs> no, <laughs> one thing like we always talk about, Vinny, is like, n- no matter what he's gotten into on the weekend, you can always count on him. Yeah, like he's always sure. like whether it's like such a good dude doing like a labor job or like you've asked him for a hand with something like even if he's like dog shit hung over he's gonna be that guy who like is helping you out <laughs> i don't and, know like this, actually uh, putting all of his effort into we're it we're trying to speak so highly of him but i don't know if we're just digging a deeper <laughs> hole for him <laughs> <laughs> sorry Vin. Uh-huh. okay let's wrap this up no he'll um, love it a quick all other right. plug i'm on another podcast called pretty much experts with my brothers and every week we pick some random ass subject that one of my brothers decides and we uh, talk about it for like an hour. Um, yeah, they do like a it's grade fun. school research assignment yeah, about it. Yeah, not even. And yeah, it's social studies <laughs> level research on a given topic and talk shit. And then it just turns into stories about us growing up in a small town. Um, and it's fucking hilarious. It's so, it's a shit show. So, and you um, can tell that they're having fun and like these guys really know each other well. And it's like, um, it's it's pretty much the reason why when RJ messaged me to do this podcast, I was like, okay, I'm down. I've laughed Sweet. so many times at your other podcast. Like, let's uh, let's fucking go for it. Also, one more thing we didn't mention this episode that I want you to break down before we completely finish it is how you base your picks on fighters because we've said it in the past two episodes yeah but it's really an important thing about this podcast because like i said we don't know shit so if we're ripping on a fighter or something don't take it personally because this is how we base our opinion on fighters well take it away to be perfectly frank once again my picks are (laughs) 30 percent right they're usually wrong but i do (laughs) once 
first pick, and I guess that's why it hasn't come up in this show because I don't really know any of these fighters on the main card. But first and foremost is I rate the the individual on their fatherhood capability. I like a good most family man. It's the most important thing. Family man number one. How do you treat your Great children? Great example of that. Donald yeah. Cerrone. That's our. Uh, he's our goose, our golden goose right now. Yeah, he's number little... one. But DC on, is on always tonight's the number episode. One in our heart. DC yeah. Daniel Cormier is number one forever. Um, and mm-hmm. that brings us to our second criteria: is the nickname. Yeah. And nickname is huge. Nicknames are usually horrible in the UFC, yeah. but uh, Gentle Boa in the main event tonight, Santigo Ponzinibbio. That's a pretty cool nickname. So yeah. if you don't have a cool nickname, I like to have no nickname. Like that's pretty badass. If you're just cool enough to the not have damage. one, the damage. The damage is a cool nickname. Um, no one else on the main card really has one tonight, so it hasn't come up. So I'm glad you brought this up, Stu. And then my third yeah. criteria is the abs. I don't know if that's uh, which um, I don't co-sign with that, but yeah, I that's I'm, I'm, respect I'm, I'm, you. One part of it that. is like maybe I'm like thirty percent gay. The other part, it shows me what shape you're in. <laughs> but if I see abs, forty percent, maybe fifty-five percent. Pro wrestling fan. I don't know what life, percent so. it is, <laughs> but abs to me are like a giveaway <laughs> that this guy is taking the training camp seriously. This guy is probably a really good lover, which would lead to being a good father. <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe 45 percent maybe, maybe 60 <laughs> percent but not that there's anything wrong with that because no. we respect all people not like all donald races, cerrone who's sexuality. a little bit homophobic <laughs> <laughs> donald cerrone's no, a great father maybe not the best the... humanitarian <laughs> uh, so, let's wrap yeah, this up that's Stu. the breakdown of how we 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 rank our fighters so if you fucking if uh if you're listening for a, a real deal breakdown of fights then uh still listen to us but maybe listen to ariel's show yeah. after well ariel doesn't really break down fights either he just interviews people like i think you yeah, should listen to robin black to cause... robin black's my favorite like breakdown guy yeah he gets way nerd. too animated though so i can't watch it every week but he but don't listen he to does Thomas. research yeah, Luke Thomas is a bore. I feel like yeah, uh, yeah. If you want to go to sleep, you if you have a problem Ariel falling show. asleep at night, put on Luke Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> Luke Thomas is our square of the night. Yeah, tonight since we haven't really ripped on anybody and we did such a good job ripping on Weidman last week, I'm giving Luke Thomas our square of the night. Oh yeah, because that guy stinks. If I'm gonna give Korean Zombie Ouch. and El Pantera fight of the year, I'm giving Luke Thomas <laughs> cocksucker of the year. <laughs> <laughs> He's so bored. And with that, like. Can you name someone that looks so bored at their job? Like, he's just struggling to finish sentences every time. He just wants out of there, too. Like, at the end of the podcast, he's always trying to wrap it up. Where, like, Ariel's, like, always, like, fucking, like, going, like, an extra Switch over to Twitter to listen to me and Rick talk for another hour. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. It's just, like, yeah, those dudes love what they do. They love what they do. Luke Thomas Uh just loves growing beards. Yeah, yeah, and like perfectly maintaining them. Uh, like, get yeah. out of here. Fuck you, Luke Thomas. Fuck you, Luke Thomas. And your fucking <laughs> MMA hour, which really isn't your show. Yeah, Come on, we all Luke know. Thomas News Fest. Luke Thomas blows for fucking four hours straight. <laughs> With that being said, take us out, RJ. Okay, this Love is Dudes on Dudes. I'm Robert John. This is Stu. And we'll be back uh, next week with a breakdown of UFC Fight Night and a preview of the next weekend. Yeah, hopefully Uh, a bigger car. (laughs) See see you guys next week. Thanks for listening. Bye.